The summer months are often a time when families travel together, perhaps vacation, a family reunion, or just a quick trip to grandma's house. These road trips can either be miserable or days when wonderful memories are made. What a picture of all of life. We are just passing through this world and families must learn how to enjoy the Lord and one another as we make the journey together. We are taking a summer road trip through the book of Philippians, the book of Christian joy, and discovering principles to help our homes. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. It's amazing to me, every time I come to the book of Philippians, how much emphasis there is in this book on the mind, on the thought life, uh, how connected it is to joyful Christian living. Now, I'm not talking about the power of positive thinking, and if you think it, you know, it will happen. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a principle that if we don't give attention to what goes into our thought life and to the way we think every day, we will never be the joyful, victorious Christians God wants us to be. And the truth is, most people let others set the agenda for them. They let others around them and media and lots of other influences uh, direct what they're going to give their thoughts to. And Christians have to be more intentional and purposeful than that. I'll remind you that we are in Philippians chapter 4, and we're dealing with 10 Habits of Happy Homes. I've given you four already. Let's review just a moment. In verses 1 to 3, we have to learn to get over quarrels and disagreements. In verse 4, we have to choose joy every day. In verse 5, we have to learn to treat one another gently, moderately. And then in verse 6 and verse 7, which we're coming to today, we have to learn to turn our care to prayer and our trial to thanks. But let's add one to that today. We have to learn to guard and guide our thought life. Again, here we are with the mind. Let's pick up where we left off. I read verse 6 in our last study. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And we pick up now in verse 7, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's wonderful, isn't it? God said he can guard your mind. He can guard your heart. He can put a a fence, a wall around the castle of your inner man. But please don't miss this. Lots of people quote verse 7 and do not apply verse 8. Because immediately after saying that God is able to keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus, he says in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Do you see how the promise of verse 7 is connected to the principle of verse 8? We want to claim the truth that the Lord is able to keep our hearts and minds. But I ask you, brethren, are you choosing true things? and honest things, and just things, and pure things, and lovely things, and good report things, and virtuous things, and praiseworthy things to think on. You see, you have to choose what and who you're going to think about. And how do you do that? Well, you've got to back up one step from that, and you've got to choose the influences. You've got to choose the things that affect your thought life. Basically, there are two gates that go into our minds. There is the eye gate and there is the ear gate. So through what you're looking at, what you're reading, what you're observing, and what you're listening and hearing uh, day by day, all of those things are influencing what's going on in your thought life. And I'm just going to tell you, the world is constantly going to try to invade your home. And how's it going to do that? It's going to try to invade your home by invading your thought life. That's why every day you've got to set a watch. Every day you've got to be on guard and be sober because the enemy is looking for just a crack in the door. That's all he needs. Have you ever had a uh, a rodent get in your home, a reptile get in your home, insects get in your home? You'll know if you have, it doesn't take much room for one of those intruders to get in. Just a crack, just a crevice, just a moment when the door is open. Well, I want you to know nothing could be further from the truth. That old serpent, the devil, slithers into every garden that gives him space. And every 
place. It allows the devil just a little room. He's going to come in. That's why the Bible says, neither give place to the devil. So guard your thoughts by guiding your thoughts. Uh, the principle of replacement is so important. You can't just take the wrong things out. Remember, the Christian home is not about what you take out of it. It's about what you put into it. So on the positive side, fill your home with good music. Fill your home with good books. Fill your home uh, with, with good things to watch. Fill your home with good conversation. Fill your home with good healthy distractions and uh, recreational things for your children uh, that are healthy and wholesome. Choose positive things, and by the grace of God, then trust that the Lord will enable you to keep your heart and to keep your home. But let's add one more today. Uh, listen to verse number 9. He says, those things, remember in verse 8 he said, think on these things, and then he connects uh, the right thought life to something else. He says, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. Oh, I love the fact he, he talks about the peace of God in verse 7, and now the God of peace in verse 9. Oh, friend, I, I don't just want peace. I want the God of peace. Do you see how personal it gets? We need the Lord. Oh, may the God of peace be yours today, and may the peace of God uh, just cover your family today. But notice there's another principle in verse number 9. He said, if you want to think on the right things and, and do the right things, he said, then go back to what you've learned, what you've received, what you've heard, what you've seen in me. So let's add a sixth habit of happy homes today, and it is this, follow godly examples. Everybody needs examples. Everybody needs patterns to follow. I think the greatest patterns, of course, are the examples given to us in Scripture. But all around us, the Lord allows us to cross paths with people who exhibit, who exemplify so many of these wonderful truths. And I would just challenge you in your home, uh, identify married couples, for example, that you regard and respect their marriage as being Christ-honoring and seek to follow that example. Uh, young people, children, find someone, a man, a woman, that honors God that has the right kind of testimony for the Lord, and then follow that example. That's what Paul is saying to the church at Philippi. He's saying to them, look, I taught you these things, but I've showed you these things. I've lived these things. Now you take them and you make them your own. In other words, somebody has already pioneered the path ahead of you. Somebody has already cut the trail, follow proven steps, follow in the path of those who are seeking to honor the Lord. He said much the same thing in the previous chapter, chapter 3, verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. Now, there's positive examples. There's negative examples. Even in the Bible, we have that. Now, there are things that God says, this is a good, a good model to follow, and this is what you don't want to do. And some people even today serve as negative examples. But by the grace of God, identify other families who've honored the Lord, who've raised their children, couples who've stayed faithful to one another and to Jesus for many years and decades, and say by the grace of God, we want to follow that same example, and we want to leave that kind of example for the next generation to follow. Yes, my friend, if you want a happy heart, you'll have to choose it, and if you want a happy home, you'll have to work at it. It's not just going to fall like a lightning out of heaven. No, it will come from heaven. It will be the the gift and reward of God to faithful obedience. And so today, take these principles from Philippians chapter 4 and apply them to your family. And may the Lord teach you to enjoy this journey together. What can you take away from this study of God's Word? Where do you need to apply truth to your own life and family? God's Word is the guidebook for this journey of life, and we sincerely pray that you will follow it. Visit us at enjoyingthejourney.org for additional resources for your home and Christian life. Plan to join us again on our next study and encourage all of your family to make the summer road trip with us. May God bless you and those you love today.